Hello, this is Christopher Larson from Formosa Interactive representing Dolby Laboratories. This is part two of a three-part series showing how to get your game audio engine to pass Dolby Atmos content from a PC to a Dolby Atmos AVR. Please check out part one for the initial setup of your Windows 10 environment. You can find that either on the Dolby Developer YouTube channel or by finding it on developer.dolby.com. Picking up from where we left off in part one, we can see that our audio device is still set for Dolby Atmos for home theater. Currently, you can get the Dolby Atmos SDK installation package from your Xbox developer representative. The first thing to do is copy the authoring and SDK folder to the root of your WISE installation folder. Choose to replace the files in the destination if it asks you. This will install the tool plugins, the headers, and the runtime libraries. There are three routing options for getting spatial audio content from WISE to the Windows audio system. A sync device, a bus effect, or a mixer plugin. If all of your content is going to be spatialized, the sync device approach is going to be the best choice. If some of your content is spatialized but some of it is 2D or stereo, you will want to use the bus effect method. If you would like to have more control over the individual dynamic objects, you would want to use the mixer plugin. For more information about each of these methods, you can check out the integration document in the installer folder, contact us at games at dolby.com, or discuss it with your Xbox developer representative. For this example, I'm just going to use a test sound and do a basic setup using all three methods. To set up a sync device, first you need to create one in the share sets tab of your project. Select work unit in the audio devices folder and create a new child, choosing Windows Sonic Sync as the type. Next you need to direct the authoring tool to output to that device in the user preferences. Under audio system, choose the new Windows Sonic Sync device that you created. Now, all the audio output from the WISE authoring tool will be routed to the spatial audio system in Windows. Using our test sound, we can see that it is routed to the master audio bus. And if we play it, we can see that as I pan the sound around, it is getting sent to a 12 channel or 7.1.4 output, as you can see in the master meter. To set up a bus effect, we're going to choose the bus where we're going to route all spatialized audio. As you can see, this already has a WISE meter instantiated on it, so we can see the levels before they get sent out to the spatial audio system of Windows. Now we just drop in a Windows Sonic effect on the spatialized audio bus. Next, we need to go to our test sound and route its output to that spatialized audio bus. Then we're gonna go back to the meter effect on that spatialized audio bus so that we can check our signal, making sure that we are in capture mode so that we can see the live bus data. So here you can see that the audio data is getting sent to the 12 channel output of the Windows Sonic bus effect, which won't show up in the master bus meter because that data is getting passed off directly to the spatial audio system of Windows. The mixer plugin method is technically still in beta, and for most developers, either of the previous methods are going to be the easiest to work with. Also, keep in mind that the Mixer plugin will only process 3D positional mono sounds, though you will still be able to use a 7-1 channel bed for your non-spatial content. So, first you need to set up a bus that is going to receive the 3D pan sound and instantiate the Windows Sonic Mixer plugin on it. Note that this is different than the effect plugin in tab. Then we just route the test sound to the bus with the mixer plugin, and that 3D information will pass directly to the spatial audio system in Windows. So those are the three ways to route spatial audio from WISE using the Windows Sonic plugins. The one last thing to mention is that these are distinct methods which are designed to be used independently. So you would choose only one of these methods, not all three of them. Next, in the third of this three-part series, 
I'll go through a couple of different content examples and talk about general design and implementation concepts as they relate to spatial audio. Thanks for watching, and be sure to catch the next episode by subscribing to this channel or visiting developer.dolby.com.